Welcome back guys and um, now we're going to have a look at how to log into the web portal. Now you may remember I've mentioned this um, through the sessions that basically sometimes some of the items on the menu may not be there. For instance the file if you want to send a file through the web chat and um, possibly the breakout rooms. Um, so sometimes you need to be able to go and check to see how to put the setting on or some settings you actually might want to turn off yourself. OK, so to do that, we need to log into the web portal. OK, and to do that, we're going to use our Internet Explorer or our Chrome, whatever browser that we use. So we're just going to have a little look at that and have a look at some of the settings. So as I said, the reasons would really be the breakout rooms and the file downloads and so on. OK, so we're going to log into Zoom and we're going to need our username and password to do that. And once we do that, we'll bring us into this screen here where we're going to see the details of ourselves and some of the options on the left hand side, which is our profile and meetings and so on. Now, I think the best thing to do is to actually just do a little demo. So I'm just going to do a little demo now and show you how to do that when I'm actually in the web portal itself. So I've already logged in here, as you can see, I'm on the Internet and you can see my name. And you can see all the details on the left hand side. So I'm just going to close some of these screens. It's telling us here that it's going to we need to update to Zoom version five and so on. So we're going to click close on that as well. OK, so we've got our main screen in front of us. So under profile, you can put your picture and it gives you just basic details about yourself. OK, so it shows you um, what version you are using and so on. As you can see, I'm on the basic free version here. Then on the left hand side, we have a tab that says meetings. If we click on meetings, it will show any meetings that we've already had. So if I press previous meetings, it will show me any meetings that's there. My personal meeting room, the details of it will be there and so on. Also, the next one then is webinars and um, to, to use webinars, you have to have a subscription. And as you can see there, the webinars go from 100 participants to 10,000. So, you know, normally big companies would be signed up to use the webinars. As I said, it's a paid uh, subscription version. Then recordings, as we saw earlier on, if we had any recordings, as I mentioned, the cloud recordings are only for the paid subscribers, as you can see there. Otherwise, you may have local recordings on your machine. So on this particular um, machine, I have no local recordings at the minute, but if I did, they would be listed there. Now, the reason we came in here is to look at the settings, and this is the one that I'm most interested in. And this is where we can look to see um, what options maybe are turned on or turned off and so on. And we simply can just toggle them on and off. OK, so we have some sections that we can go to straight away by pressing each of these, anyone you like. And it brings you to that particular sec section um, in the settings. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it from the top and I'm going to slowly scroll down and I'm going to show you some that I think would maybe need to be switched on or switched off or maybe missing or whatever. OK. So we're just going to start off, as we said, with the schedule meeting. So if I scroll down here a little bit, you can see some of the options that we can select. So at the minute, it's off that um, people can join before the host. You can switch that on if you want to do that. OK, your personal um, ID uh, is, is enabled for your personal meeting. That's fine. OK, if we come down here, we have a password. If you want to change that, that your password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever is yourself. You can simply press on the little pencil and you can type it in there and that will be changed to your password all the time. OK, then if we scroll down another little bit, we'll have a look at some other bits and pieces. As you can see, some of them here are telling you are locked out now. You can't change them. So like instant meetings, it's telling you you must have the password and it won't let you change that. OK, and um, let me see what other ones do we need to have a look at. There's no more on that particular one. Then we have the chat. So in this particular option here, it's set on, which is fine to allow participants to chat and send messages. But for some reason, you might decide you don't want that to happen in your meeting. You just might find that people are doing too much of the chatting and you don't really want to be. You haven't got time to reply. So maybe it's best to switch it off. So if you wanted to switch it off, you simply toggle the button. Once you do that, you get the little message will come up and you would press turn off and it would switch it off for you. OK. Another one that you may or may not want to switch on and off is private chat. So you may want to switch that off. And that means that anyone in the meeting can privately chat to each other. 
while you're giving the presentation. So if you don't want that to happen, you press that button. You can see it comes up. It's telling you it's updated it and it knocks the little um, the little thing off. So again, it's a toggle on or a toggle off. OK, now wait, we see the, the file transfer. This is the one that you may not have on. OK, I have it on because I'm always using it to show for demos. But if you can't see the file in the file transfer in the chat, it could be switched off. OK, so if it is switched off, it'll look like that. You simply press the button and you put it back on again. OK, so that's one that's very, very useful to know. Then screen sharing. You can change the settings on this as well. OK, so you can see here we have who's sharing only the host. If I wanted to allow all the participants, uh, I press all the participants and they will automatically be able to share when they go into the meeting. OK, uh, let me have another look. The whiteboard is one that sometimes people switch on or switch off. It is generally switched on all the time. But if you can't see it, just pop into your settings to see. And again, it'll switch it on and switch it off. OK, wait till we have a look. We will keep coming down here. You can see there's lots now. There's the breakout rooms. And as I said to you, the breakout rooms are generally set to off. So if you can't see them on your menu bar, you need to come in here and you simply press the, the, uh, the breakout rooms and they will go on just like that. OK, as simple as that. So again, switch on or switch off. It's up to yourself. OK, um, and that's about it. We can keep going through the virtual background. You can switch it on and off. So basically everything that you see in your Zoom can be switched on and off. Um, this is a good one as well, and I would advise you to switch this one on. OK, generally what I do when I'm having my a Zoom session, especially um, when I'm demoing it to, to new clients or whatever, and they may never have used Zoom before. So and they may not have even installed it before. OK, so if that's the case, to make sure that the clients can get on to Zoom and watch the presentation, I always have this switched on. And what that basically means is when I send out the invite, there's a web link. You might remember seeing it and basically you can click on the web link and it will bring you straight into the Zoom meeting without having to have um, Zoom installed. So, you know, if you're not sure if your participants have already got Zoom installed on their devices, I would always make sure that one there is on and it's generally set to off. So I'm going to leave that one on for the moment. OK, but as I said, you can spend plenty of time having a look at all of these yourselves. There's absolutely loads of them down there and they are all, as I mentioned, in the settings. Just to recap again, to get in here, you must go onto the web portal. And once you go onto the web portal to Zoom, you put in your username and password. You just simply log in and it brings you in here. OK, so that was just a little quick run through on the web portal. Um, I hope uh, you found it useful and, and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching.